What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's gonna be a revisit video where I'm gonna go over how to appendix carry for uh, bigger guys, how to appendix carry for fat guys, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so I say it's gonna be a revisit video because I've done this in the past, so go check out that uh, video. I think it was from a couple years ago. Um, I'm gonna go over my EDC stuff and then I'm gonna go over how I carry it. Like I said, spoiler alert, I do carry appendix. A lot of people uh, would say that you can't carry appendix if you're a heavier guy. Uh, that's been uh, dispelled here recently. There's several people who put out videos showing how they carry. It is possible. It does take some trial and error, um, but I'm going to show you guys what works for me, what might work for you, uh, and just kind of what you need to know going into it and what to be prepared for. I've definitely changed up uh, the way that I carry from the last time that I made the video, and I'm going to go over that here shortly. So here you'll see my CZP10C loaded up in a T-Rex Arms sidecar, uh, which obviously has my spare magazine. I was carrying this 90% uh, of the time. I still carry uh, in this configuration occasionally, but I have switched to a different uh, firearm that I carry every day. Uh, and it's also different in terms of the holster setup for it. So let me show you that. So what I've switched to is this CZP07. Uh, and it is in a standard appendix holster. And then my spare magazine it is carried in my Neomag carrier. And I'm gonna show you guys that a little bit later. Uh, the reason that I switched to the regular appendix style holster as opposed to a sidecar uh, or any type of variant holster that has your spare magazine attached to it, uh, I just think this is a little more comfortable. There are times where the sidecar is just a, a little bit more cumbersome. Um, and I'll get to that here in a second. Um, but I find that just the appendix style is more comfortable. And then when I have my Neo mag or my spare mag in my pocket, it kind of frees up some space in front and just makes day-to-day -day stuff a little bit easier. I also switched to this particular firearm because it is a hammer fired uh, firearm as opposed to striker and then when I'm holstering which I don't do a lot of drawing from concealment when I practice shooting um, I will dry fire and practice drawing from concealment uh, but on the range I just use a regular uh, outside the waistband safari land setup but in the event that I'm having any like drawing in and out putting the gun back in the holster I'm able to put my thumb over the back of this hammer and as I'm pushing the gun into the holster I would feel if this trigger snagged on anything, it would start to push that hammer back. Also, with a hammer fired gun, that first pull uh, in this particular firearm is about 12 pounds. So it takes a, a considerable amount of force to bring that trigger back uh, if there was going to be an accidental discharge or negligent dis discharge, whatever you want to call it, as opposed to a Glock style trigger, which is about five pounds. And then my CZP10, it's about three and a half, four pounds. So it's heavier, heavier trigger. Um, it does have that moving hammer that I can feel when I put my thumb on it. So I find it just to be a little bit safer. And then also this is a quality firearm. I love it. I take it out and shoot it on the range all the time. So I'm getting those, those reps in um, and I can't say enough good things about it. It has a fantastic uh, double action and single action trigger in it. Uh, the ergonomics of it are great. It shares a lot of features with the P10. The mags are compatible, um, so I thought it was a good choice to snag this thing up to get it into my EDC rotation. Okay, so here's what I would say is probably gonna be one of your most important features of concealed carry, which is the belt that you're using. A lot of people overlook this. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that you can't use a regular leather belt because you absolutely can. I would advise that you try to get one that's pretty thick um, to add rigidity to it so it's not flimsy. But these webbing style belts like this one from Blue Alpha tend to work out a little bit better. They're just a little bit more confidence inspiring. This one comes in at $35, which I think is fantastic because that's probably gonna be cheaper than a leather belt that you pick up at somewhere like Walmart or Kohl's or whatever. Again, this one's from Blue Alpha Gear. It's the Warrior Poet branded one. It is their, I think it's their Slim EDC, but it's uh, it's one of their EDC belts. Uh, how it works is, has this loop here, tag in goes through the loop, and then it comes back 
and Velcros over. So you purchase them by your pant size. So don't worry about getting a, a larger belt to accommodate for the firearm. They've already done that for you. The only complaint that I have is that when I pull this over, you'll see <clears throat> that's how much uh, Velcro you get on your tag end. This is a longer piece of like the softer Velcro. I would have liked to have seen this piece of Velcro that are this part of the Velcro be a little bit longer, just so I'm getting more contact surface that's attaching to the Velcro. Just a personal preference thing. I haven't had any issues with it. Been wearing it for about two weeks, two and a half weeks now, and it's been great. I've never had it pop off or anything like that. Um, I have nothing but good things to say about it. It's super comfortable. So it's rigid enough to hold up your gun, but not so rigid that you're gonna be uncomfortable wearing it all day. Okay guys, so as you can see here, when I set mine up, I actually go, I run the tag end through my left hand side, come all the way around, and then go through here. And then I get started by just tagging it over to the side, and then I slide it all the way this way. What you'll notice with this particular belt is that this portion with the Velcro on it is thinner. That way it can fold back over on itself, but you want the holster on the thicker part. So I bring the tag end over like this, slide the belt over until it hits this belt loop here. And then that way, when I put the, and I always have my firearm in the holster as opposed to putting the holster in and then putting the firearm in it. I leave the firearm in the holster. I think that's safer. Pop that on there like that. Make sure that wing is in place. Then if I need to, I can readjust. And get it. All right, guys. As you can see, this is my T-Rex Arms sidecar holster that I have my firearm in. This is how I used to carry all the time. I still do occasionally, um, but I've switched to the other setup, as you saw. Um, but this is how this would work. So holster goes in like this. I've already got my belt set up. Pops over. Get the other side popped over on your belt. All right. As you can see, guys, you probably think I'm weird because I have my undershirt tucked into my underwear. But... I think it keeps uh, things a little more tidy and uh, helps to kind of hopefully eliminate from tucking my undershirt down into the holster where it could get caught on the trigger and I could have a negligent dis discharge, excuse me, where I could have a negligent discharge and shoot myself in the dick. So don't want to do that. All right, so this is how I have been carrying for a long time. I just recently switched, like I said, go back and forth to this every once in a while, but um, this is a great setup if you're going to have an overshirt um, and an undershirt like this so you can have like a flannel button up over it. <clears throat> I don't particularly think that the sidecar is great for heavier set guys if you have on just like a t-shirt. I think for me it prints a little bit, but 90% of the average people out in the world are not going to be looking at your shirt and go, oh, that guy's got a gun right there. Unless you have on like uh, compression fit shirt and they can see the outline of the gun but if you see like a little bit of the end of the handle or something it's people usually don't notice um, but this is how I would carry with an undershirt and then a button up over it um, I could get away with the t-shirt but if you're a heavier set guy just kind of play to your strengths I mean if it prints super bad with t-shirts on then maybe try a button up shirt but sidecar is definitely viable for heavy set guys Okay, I will say one of the reasons that I switched from the sidecar setup with your spare mag in the holster is because I think the regular Penix rig and then having a Neo mag is a little more comfortable when you're sitting down. But I'll show you what it looks like on me and kind of tell you the little tips and tricks to the process that I have for it. So standing up, when I go to sit down, I do kind of readjust, pull the back up a little bit. And then I typically, see as I'm still covered up, kind of pull up with my thumbs a little bit. And what I'm trying to do is get my gun over my gut so that when I sit down, I don't have my gut over the top of the gun. And even if you're a skinny fat dude, you're still gonna feel this, the how uncomfortable it would be if you had the gun jammed into your, your uh, belly rolls there. But this is what it looks like when I'm sitting down. So I just try to get my thumbs in like this, make sure that it's angled up. And you're just gonna have to get over the fact that it's pointing straight at your dick. And you're just gonna have to, I guess, have the mental fortitude to decide if that's gonna be for you or not. But that is what it looks like when I'm sitting down. If I'm readjusted, doesn't really stick out. There is a bit of a shelf right there where you can see the handle of the fire or the grip of the firearm. But 
the average person probably isn't gonna notice that. So let me show you what I switched to now and what the differences are and why it's a little bit more comfortable for me. All right guys, the first thing I'm gonna show you about how I changed this setup is the Neomag magazine carrier. Um, this puts the spare magazine in my pocket as opposed to in a Kydex holster or in the sidecar setup. Um, so it's literally just a magnet that has a clip on it like you would have for a pocket knife that attaches like this. It does take some getting used to in terms of how to get it on your pocket or on the um, inside of your pocket without getting this pulled off. You can attach it with it off or with it on. I leave it on when I attach it and then goes in the pocket like this. And then should I need it, reach in, slides out. And then it loads back up the exact same way. It's just a magnet, so it sticks to it. This is the deep carry one. Um, some There's a couple other options that they have where you have more of the magazine sticking up a little bit higher like that. I got the deep one because I carry um, in a lot of places where it's probably not advised to or you don't want to be advertising that you're carrying all the time. So this is just a little bit deeper concealment. Typically, the edge of that pocket rolls over the top of the magazine so somebody can't even, if they're looking down next to you, they can't even see the, the base plate of the magazine. I was kind of worried because for a while when I was carrying a Glock, I was like, oh, they can literally see the word Glock and everybody kind of knows what that is even if they're in the firearms world or they're not uh, on the end of the base plate. But anyway, so that's how that is. And I think they're really fast. Um, I'll show you guys in an upcoming video of me doing uh, draw times with the sidecar and then with um, this Neomag carrier and the difference, which is faster, which is slower. I think um, the Neomag is a little bit faster than the sidecar because you don't have to defeat so much of the garment where that sidecar is up here and you're having to pull the shirt up. So this hand's already busy. So you're pulling the shirt up, get the magazine out, as opposed to this, typically your shirt's not that long that it's way over it. I see, feel like that's a, quite a bit faster. Uh, but I'm going to run some times here, so that's going to be in an upcoming video. All right, and then I have my PO7, which I'm carrying now. I'll show you guys how I load that up. And there you go. To me, I think it prints just a little bit less. And here it is with me sitting down. So. It's a little bit less to move around. It's lighter because you don't have that extra Kydex in the magazine in there. Um, I think in terms of comfort, it's just a little bit more comfortable. You don't have that whole sheet of Kydex smashing things in. Um, and then the big thing is with that magazine sticking up, it just, I don't know, you can do it or I can do it. It's not terrible by any means. I just think that the regular appendix style with a wing on it um, is a little bit more comfortable and then having that spare magazine down here works out to be just a little bit more comfortable than the sidecar. Now, there are gonna be times where this isn't necessarily um, ideal or optimal and that is if you have like uh, Dickies style pants where, see with jeans, typically the pocket goes straight across. Well, if you work um, in like the labor industry where you wear Dickies, where that pocket is more of a slit that goes down this way, uh, the Neomags will work with that, but if I'm wearing that type of pant, I'm probably going to wear my sidecar just because the magazine gets kind of kinked up this way, like this, as opposed to being straight up and down. Um, it's doable, but it's not ideal. I don't love it. Um, but anyway, so if I'm going to wear like a Dickie style pair of work pants that have that slit or a lot of khakis have that too. I'll go to my sidecar. But if I have regular pockets like this, I carry the Neomag and the regular Penning style holster. And the wing that I'm talking about is this wing here. What that does is pushes, creates tension to bring the grip of your pistol into your body this way. If you didn't, if you don't have that wing there, the gun kind of sits flat up and down and the belt is the only thing that's pulling it in. But this hits the belt, creates that tension that tucks it in just a little bit more, makes it a little bit more concealable. Now, one thing that I did wanna mention is that in terms of positioning the firearm here in your pants, um, I think that for me it works out best because there is like a space between your junk 
and that crease in your thigh and like your pelvic area and the barrel of my gun and the the holster kind of sit right where that crease is at right here so i don't want it all the way over right on top of my you know my junk and i don't want it obviously way over here but it's supposed to be in that appendix position where that barrel is going right like this that way when i sit down right there that way when i sit down it's kind of next to your junk it's not on top of it it's not getting because if you were to sit down with the gun way over here it's going to hit the top of your thigh and that's going to shove the gun up into your gut it's just not going to work so there's a void right here between your junk and your leg where i line the barrel up now with the sidecar holster that's a little bit more difficult because you see you have this extra kydex down here so this one i actually do put more in the front and then the whole holster rides up a little bit higher um, so it's just it's a different setup so when that's on here it's right about there right about there now you can see that where the end of the barrel and holster is is right here the end of the barrel and holster on my p07 is a little bit lower but it's also off to the side more so you'll just have to kind of mess around with it that means that this the top of the gun's up a little bit higher so it's going to hit your gut but you're also not jabbing yourself in the junk um, but again kind of have to mess around with it see what you guys like okay guys so one other thing that i wanted to talk about in terms of picking out a holster and firearm that you're going to carry is um, what's called pelvic contact so if you are carrying a full-size firearm or i shouldn't say full size but if you're carrying like a glock 19 style firearm you're probably going to be okay but if you have a shorter firearm like maybe a, a sig p365 or a ruger lcp i would say try to get a holster where this portion is longer so with this gun obviously it sits flush at the bottom but it is a longer slide uh, and longer barrel but if you have a shorter gun like this i would see if you if there is an option to get a holster um, where it has some excess at the bottom and i know what you're going to say which is well, why do you want that excess there because it's going to hit you in the junk well there's kind of like a happy medium you don't want it to hit you in the junk but you don't you also don't want to have like a very small amount of the barrel into your pants um, or into the holster so if you have a shorter barrel there's only so much of the barrel that's going to go down in the holster and then the rest is sticking up outside of your pants and then it, you create this fulcrum where you're always going to feel like the gun is tipping out like this because it doesn't have that pelvic contact behind it to push into see what i mean like this i know i'm flagging myself but the gun's empty so don't worry there's nothing in it so yeah, so if you don't have that pelvic contact behind it like this, it's gonna constantly feel like it's wanting to fall out of your pants. Even if it's, I mean, you could strap it down to the holster, but it's still gonna feel like it's, it's pointing in towards you. So pelvic contact, it's very important that you have enough contact, whether it be Kydex, if your firearm's shorter, that's fine. Just get a Kydex holster that's long enough that you're going to have a good portion below your belt line you don't want to have you don't want to have that much of your firearm below your belt see you should have this this one set up to be about like that but if you have a shorter barrel firearm you only got this much below the belt line because the barrel and slide is so short your your guts constantly going to be pushing the gun out like this and it's going to be uncomfortable even when you're walking around it's going to feel like the gun's falling out of your pants and out of the holster if you're one of those guys that's carrying a 365 or a Ruger LCP or something like that, a shorter barrel gun, um, try to find a holster that's longer or put in the comments whenever you order it. Hey, can you make, because most of them are, are either custom order or they're smaller businesses now. Um, put in the comments like, hey, can I get the end of it to be a little bit longer so I can have better public contact? Like for instance, with the Glocks, a lot of the slides and the frames are the same, but the length is different. So you could get the longer version holster for your shorter version firearm. That way you have more Kydex covering it up, making that pelvic contact. Um, now, one thing that I wanted to show you guys in terms of kind of more of the mechanics of engaging your firearm, when you grab the bottom of your shirt to pull up, or if you grab in the middle, whichever, pull up on your garment, 
and then lean back. There's no rule that says when you draw your firearm that you can't move your body to get to it better. Does it look cool like in the movies where they pull their gun out like John Wick? But lean back, it's going to get your gut out of the way. It's going to push that firearm off a little bit to where you can get to it and get that good positive grip. You do not want to go to grab your firearm and get a half-ass grip, pull it out, and then reposition your hand on it. No, you want to get that firing grip from the drop. Reach in, get your firing grip, and present your firearm. So for me, it works out that in the uh, colder months, I wear a flannel, and in the warmer months, I wear the old Boogaloo uniform, which is the Hawaiian shirt. So. Don't forget guys, just like when you're buying clothes, it's not a one size fits all type of deal. Make sure that you have clothes that fit you. Um, when you pick them out, make sure that you can pull up, access your firearm. And also you're just gonna have to play around with where the firearm's at on your body in relation to the clothes that you're wearing and how you can access them. So again, what I like to do is pull up, lean back, present the firearm. I'm telling you, if you incorporate that into your dry fire routine, you're gonna see a big difference of just getting that gut out of the way. That also makes room for your thumb to get behind the gun, grab that firing grip, and pull out of the holster. Try it, I think you'll like it. All right guys, so let's wrap up. Uh, the three big things for me still to this day, and I mentioned this in the last video, are having a good Kydex holster, whether that's a regular appendix style or whether that is a sidecar setup. Having a good belt, again, uh, I don't, I'm not going to say that you have to get a webbing style. You can make it work with a regular belt, but I would encourage you to try it. I think that you'll like the webbing style, especially um, Blue Alphas coming in at 35 bucks. There's really no reason not to. That's pretty affordable. And then also having the gun set up in a position that fits you. Do not just assume that right out of the box, if it doesn't fit, that it's not going to work. You might have to get out a screwdriver, take that holster apart, put it back together in a configuration that works for your body setup. And then also finding that sweet spot on your uh, pelvic girdle to where that gun's gonna sit and it's gonna be in that void between your junk and between your legs. Guys, I hope that answers some of the questions you had from the last video. Um, I'm gonna keep posting things as they change. Uh, in terms for everyday carry stuff, it's always evolving. You're finding better ways to do things, better ways to carry, new gear, new kit, so on and so forth, etc. So as I update my setup, I will update you guys to let you know what's working for me and what's not. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Hit that notification bell so you can get updates on my new videos that are coming out. And as always, keep shooting.